Okay, in part two of the um, Evoto V Portrait Pro, we're going to be looking first of all at the functions in each one for adjusting hair. Now, on the right, we've got, sorry, on the left, on the right, we've got Evoto. Now, this is the latest version. I've just updated this software this morning. So we're running the latest one available. And on the, le on the left, we've got Portrait Pro 24 edition. Latest one available by them. Oh, both softwares are available to download as trials. Try them out yourself. I'm just giving my personal opinion on each one. The strengths and weaknesses of both software. Anyway, so moving on. Looking at the hair functions in Evoto, we've got one here called hair gaps, and then we've got the high cranial top. And then we've got a hairline one as well, which I'd already been messing with before I started the video. Okay, so we'll put them back to how they were normal. Right, okay, so on the left-hand side, we've got Portrait Pro. We've got hair volume. They don't have a hair volume, but they've got a cranial top. Similar sort of thing, but this one only adjusts the top hair area of the head. Again, it's not something I would use it might have its advantages on some people, but anyway, similar sort of thing on Portrait Pro is hair volume. Now this works for me a lot of the time because it gives more volume to the hair and a more natural look all over. As you can see there, more volume, no volume. Again, we've got hairline on both, adjustment here, bringing the hairline down just a tad, up and down, and then we've got the same on this one, up or down, up or down. Again, not a feature I use a lot, but it's there on each one. Now, one feature that Portrait Pro hasn't got is the hair gaps feature, which is I will demonstrate now. Now, if you notice the before and after, it's recognizing this area here as a gap or something. So it's filling that in with a darker. It's doing the hair there, but it's darkening this bit of hair here, which it shouldn't have done. Again, bit of a feature. Use it too much and it does look a little bit unnatural, but it's a feature there that Portrait Pro hasn't got. It could be a win for some people. Just filling in that area there so the your eye isn't distracted too much by this area here you can just put a bit of a fill in and boom it's gone not a big deal deal breaker wise it has its uses but don't use it too much because it does look a bit unnatural right okay so sadly Evoto's hair effects functions stop there Pretty minimalistic, I would say. Whereas if we go over to Portrait Pro, once again, features are quite different. So first of all, we've got hair colors. Now this function, again, I don't use it myself that often, but it gives someone the quick ability to see what they would look like with different hair colors. So if you're in the studio or with a client, and they would just like a quick representation of what they would look like with some, you know, wacky hairstyles like a blue one. You know, you can give them a, oh, well, I can show you that now, blah, blah, blah. And then give them a quick look of how they would look with all these different wacky hairstyles in here. Not a feature I use a lot, but it's in there. Then we've got the ability to adjust the, t the temperature of the hair the tint of the hair, sharpen the hair, vibrance, etc. Fill light at the back. Uh, it's just more advanced features that are in there for the hair area of your photograph other than Portrait Pro. So again, uh, sorry, other than Evoto. So in the hair department, clear winner for me is Portrait Pro once again. Again, Evoto, they're still working on the software all the time they're always doing updates so again this might be a feature that comes into the software in the future now i am again noticing a little bit of a red tinge to my photo as it goes into the software this is the, this is how it should look 
not a big deal breaker. I can adjust it in the color adjustment section, which I shouldn't have to do. But again, it shouldn't be doing that. It might be something they can rectify in the future, but at the moment it is still affecting the color of the picture, which is a shame. Anyway, okay, next feature we're gonna be looking at is the eye functions for each software. Okay, so looking at Portrait Pro first, we've got this section here quite a few different adjustments we can do and then we'll go over to the Evoto section here and we've got some similar ones right so they both got the catch lights we've got a, quite a lot of catch lights in the portrait pro edition whereas the catch lights we've got just a minimalistic look You can see those ones there, and then we've got some outdoor ones. Adjust them, rotate them, etc., wherever you want them. All good features there. And then on the Portrait Pro section, adding catch lights. There is quite a lot of variety in here. The uh, ring light look, ring flash, etc., an outside look if you wanted to make it look like there was a, you know, there's just a lot of more features you can use in here. And then we can adjust where we want them, blah, blah, blah. Again, try it out yourself, but the features for the catch lights is a little bit more advanced again in Portrait Pro than it is in the Evoto software. Turning the attention to the whitening of the eyes let me just turn those catch lights off reset let's get rid of them catch lights gone right okay turning my attention to the cleaning of the eyes which is some of the functions we're going to definitely want to use in editing photos now again in we'll just turn those ones off as well we've got the eye brightness which is here similar thing on portrait pro is the sharpening of the eyes both give the same part of effect now one of the added features in portrait pro is the ability to sharpen eyebrows just to give them a little bit more definition if needed be we can also darken the pupils left and right. Again, each is adjustable each side. A little bit more advanced features there. Now, one of the features I do like in Portrait Pro is the, uh, sorry, in Evoto, is the ability to remove the veins, which it does a real good job of doing. If you take too much veinage out though, the, the eyes do look a little bit fake. So again, use that sparingly but it does a nice job of removing those veins, which can be a pain in the bum, for sure. Okay, eye brightness, iris removal, sorry, iris brightness there. Scalier, scali, sc, uh, scalera, which is the white of the eye. Both have these func functions for whitening the eye, but then we've got some added ones of darkening pupil, again, left and right, pupil size, if you wanted to adjust the pupil size. Again, just a lot more features added into the Portrait Pro than we have in Evoto. Evoto has got some nice features. Again, definitely a win is the removing the red veins, but a little bit more limited to the features available with Portrait Pro, so again, the eye section, I would say, is a win to Portrait Pro. For me saying that, it would be anything to do with veins. I would probably be using Photoshop to do that. If you are in a hurry, though, a winner would be the feature in Evoto that removes them for you. And just straight off the bat, it's doing a really good job. Anyway, so I will give that to Portrait Pro. Moving on to the next feature is 
the shaping of the face. Right, looking at the features on the facial reshaping, etc. They've both got the strengths and some of them have got a little bit more weaknesses than the other. But anyway, going straight into it. We've got face shape in general, jawline, forehead, etc. Same again on these. We've got the standard face in shape. Again, play with them yourselves. But I want to just sort of like talk about some of the strengths of, Pot of Evoto, which I do like, which is the ability to adjust the, say, the eyebrow thickness, which is a, again, this feature should be in Portrait Pro, but it's not. Um, the ability to adjust the thickness of the eyebrows. Another good feature is the ability to adjust the arch height and the height of the eyebrows, etc. All really good features. I do wish that um, Portrait Pro had them in, but again, it hasn't. Uh, you can adjust them individually as well. Try them yourself. Really good. I do like those features. Now, one of the uh, benefits of Portrait Pro, like I said before in the at the start of this video, was the hair volume. Really good. Now, this is um, a feature, like I said, I do use a lot. I do like that. Uh, moving on to the eye section, they're both pretty similar. The ability to adjust the eye height, width, etc., all in there. You can adjust the shape of the eyebrows on the Portrait Pro, but it is limited to what it can do compared to the adjustments in Evoto. Again, position the eyes, etc. Again, you are best off trying these yourself. I'm just going over my opinions on each software, the strengths and weaknesses, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, the, the overall winner on this section I don't know. Um, I th it, there's a lot more features in Portrait Pro. You've got the ability to give expressions. There's a, an expressions one in here, but it's only a gentle smile where this will give you a smile, frowns. Uh, you know, there's quite some, some features that aren't available in this one. It gives you in here, again, have a play with them yourself. It's not something I use a lot, but again, it's in there for you to use. We've also got a lens correction as well. If you've used the wrong lens and you need to adjust it, the, the, the sort of like the dimensions of the face, bit of distortion from a lens, you've got the correction feature in there. But they are pretty similar. I would probably give them, you know, for the strengths on this one and the strengths on this one, I'm going to go, the, the both, I give them 50, 50, 50. I can't, I can't give a winner. Both got the weaknesses, both got the strengths, both good features. It's probably lead down to personal preference, what you would use the most. For me, I would probably jump more towards Portrait Pro for the, I'm used to using that software. If I did need to use some editing on the eyebrow area, I, you know, I might have a go in Photoshop. But anyway, I would probably steer just a little bit towards Portrait Pro on that area than I would on the other one. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is finish this video. I don't like trying, you know, waffling on too much, like I said at the start of the video. And I'm just going to do an edit on each picture using both software and then again at the end you, I will leave the pictures there for you to decide which one looks the best and I'll see you in part three which hopefully I can finish off and wrap up these uh, versus software videos and give you my definitive winner and uh, yeah leave it there don't forget like subscribe leave a comment below and we'll see you in the next video guys thanks for watching thanks for looking at these videos uh, appreciate it